Loktarogar. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, everyone's favorite orc warrior, and it's time for another orc mode workout. And uh, in keeping with what I said already, slowly adding in more volume and trying to stick with the most effective compound movement so that I can try to retain as much muscle mass as possible in a caloric deficit. Uh, and, you know, as I said before, protein loading is the name of the game. Uh, again, forcing down as much protein as I can while uh, maintaining a caloric deficit. And I'll experiment around a little bit with some different things as far as my non-protein foods. But for now, uh, the last few days, it's been brown rice, beans, and broccoli. Those have been my carb sources. And then, obviously, uh, lots of chicken breast, Greek yogurt, and a little bit of whey. You know, just to fill in the gaps here and there. I put whey in coffee and stuff. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. Uh, today, uh, I went ahead. I actually bumped the weight a little bit on my close grip bench press back off work because I've been going over five reps and I'm trying to stay around five for these big lifts trying to do one single and then back off work with fives and I think what I may do on the squats I did two back off sets today and I'm going to work towards doing three and I think that'll be a nice good balance of training volume trying to again stimulate some adaptation in those legs so that I don't lose further muscle mass while cutting the cardio out so I don't lose further muscle mass or lean mass in my legs. Now, what people need to remember when I discuss that, that thought actually doesn't mean I necessarily even lost muscle. It means I lost lean mass in these areas. Uh, that could be glycogen in the muscles. That can be intramuscular water. That can be connective tissue in the fat around the muscles. It can be all of those things also. But uh, the concern is, having seen what I've seen, muscle loss is... A legitimate concern meaning because some of it very possibly was muscle particularly in my legs so that needs to be the name of the game in other words the goal here is to lose body fat as quickly as possible while minimizing muscle loss I mean in an ideal world maybe gain some muscle in some areas I mean I did gain lean mass in my arms while losing nine pounds of body weight so that's something that's something uh, so I've realized that in certain areas, maybe the lagging areas, it's possible because my arms are probably my worst body part. I think we all agree there and they have grown, uh, where I've actually seen improvements in them. Uh, viewers have noticed the improvements and the DEXA scan showed the improvements. So I don't think we can say I didn't gain muscle in my arms when the DEXA scan showed I lost it in my legs, but gained it in the arms. I think it's fair to say whatever the margin of error is there. I probably gained some muscle in my arms. So I can attribute that to the, the calisthenic work, right? And again, all the back off work on the bench. I did a fair amount of back off work on the bench volume that I hadn't been doing. So it was probably a combination of tricep and bicep. And people need to realize pull-ups, particularly from a dead hang, do work the triceps. There is data on that. The long head of the triceps actually gets reasonably stimulated. So what I'm gonna be doing here, I added in dips today. Uh, I started messing with them this weekend a little bit just to get used to doing them again. And I'm not going to be able to go super hard on dips as, uh, as if I could as if I was fresh because I'm benching. I'm hitting a heavy single and then a, a pretty heavy back off set of five on the bench every day, the close grip. So that is fatiguing me slightly going into dips. But I think a goal to work towards, which I'm already hitting now, I think, because with my pull-ups, I think, again, I'd like to try to get at least 100 dead hang pull-ups every, every week. Uh, what I'm hitting right now in my workouts, that'll get me there. Because again, three sets of six is 18 a day times six. It puts me past 100. Uh, I did 12 dips today. And, uh, you know, times six, that's not. That's like 72. So I need to start bumping that up, uh, at least just for now. And I think for just, again, stimulating a, some, some training volume, I think that will help a lot with just my upper body. Uh, because those movements, between those two movements, the entire upper body gets worked pretty effectively. Uh, even all through your core, abs, everything. I mean, there's a, again, those are fantastic movements for just upper body development. I don't think you can go wrong with full range of motion, dead hang pull-ups, and, you know, reasonably full range of motion dips. What I mean by full range of motion dips, you go down to at least parallel. You don't need to drop so low that you uh, end up dislocating a shoulder because some people aren't built to do that but still getting more range of motion possibly than a bench press. Uh, so again, trying to just get the parallel and then locking out at the top, right? So you get that final bit of tricep in there. So that's what I'm doing. And so that's what I did today. 
So I went ahead and did my, my bench. I did just did my normal uh, ramping stuff. This is still ramping up. And, you know, like I'm, I've said, right now I'm not trying to push that edge on the single. I'm not doing it on the squat or the, the, the bench. I'm just trying to get a pretty good single, at least like a 90% single that I use compensatory acceleration and explode with it as hard as I can uh, without having a grinder. We're trying to avoid grinders right now because I don't have the recovery for it. And that's just for strength maintenance. That's it. So just so that I can maintain the skill of lifting a heavy single. And it does give some stimulation. And then we're using the back off work for the hypertrophy stimulation and just the practice on the exercises. And that's the way I'm going to have to treat this for a while. My training is going to have to be adapted. And, you know, a lot of people will be like, well, why are you still doing full body every day? They are due to our peel to do full body every day. There are guys who are jacked in peel. There are guys who stay under 10% body fat year round who train full body five, six days a week. Uh, I know of quite a few out there, actually. So in the lifting world, that's not as uncommon as you think it is. So, again, bodybuilders aren't get, knowing that. But uh, the strength training world, there are guys doing it plenty of them so I see no reason to deviate from that I like that training style I prefer it it's what I want to do and that's what I set out to do earlier this year at the start of the year and there's no reason to change that particularly if I enjoy it and I'll be consistent and have adherence to my training doing it so I am having to adjust though what I'm doing right the volumes the workloads the rep ranges those things are being adjusted based upon diet goals everything else and that's where the adjustments are taking place so uh, that's what I'm doing and like I said I bumped this up a little bit today on the five because I was getting six with the 275 on the close grip too easily so it's like I, well, let me bump it five pounds and the fifth rep was again somewhat challenging so I know I got a good set out of it and again maintaining that bench press strength so all that is for and then we we'll use the dips for the additional uh, work because the dips do work some extra muscles through the body the bench press doesn't they do work some extra stabilizers and other muscles a little more lat all of that and so that's what i'm trying to do is pick the exercises that are going to work the most muscle in the body so that i can get the most strength and hypertrophy stimulation while trying so i can maintain muscle on a cut you know with the fewest sets possible really ultimately you know, while still being able to lift heavy, obviously doing these singles and stuff adds to sets. But again, trying to be a minimalist in terms of exercise selection, just pick the most efficient exercises I can, uh, where I can balance recovery with all of this. Uh, and as far as this deadlifting goes, like I said, I'm not deadlifting heavy. It's all about just training my hook grip and training my double overhand grip right now and just training the movement pattern. We're not going to go heavy on deadlift. I probably need to drop my body weight down quite a bit, but I feel like if I can hook grip with a moderate weight, as frequently as I possibly can, by the end of the year, my thumbs are gonna be pretty tough. And by doing extra double overhand work here and there, my grip's gonna be pretty good and all those dead hang pull-ups. Uh, so that when I'm ready to actually drive that deadlift up, when we get to a better body composition, I'll be ready to do so. Uh, and I'd, like I said, I did my three sets of six on dead hang pull-ups. And again, six is, is pretty close to failure for me from a dead hang. Yes, you guys saw me do eight on here. But that's also if I'm only going to do one set. I am needing to pace myself a little bit because I'm doing these about three minutes apart. Because uh, again, that's kind of your ideal based upon the data I've seen out there for hypertrophy and stuff that Dr. Brad and other people have put out. About three minutes seems to be ideal now we could argue for pure strength longer breaks can be warranted with really heavy weights but this isn't that heavy this is just my body weights 228 pounds you know for sets of six so again all about getting that dead hang at the bottom and getting all the way to the top again that stretch at the bottom with that relatively narrow grip that's what's going to give me the extra arm development that's what helps with the chest all of that other stuff the upper chest uh, because you are trying to build all of that the the, the pull-up done correctly from a full range of motion is an almost complete upper body lift right most of the muscles mass of the upper body gets worked dip is actually very similar it's just the ratios are shifted towards the other side of the body more but the actual the posterior side of the body does get some work on there core gets work so between those two again that's a pretty effective workout for the upper body I go so far as to say if someone told me you know what if you could only do three exercises and try to get you know as big as possible 
I don't think that's a bad choice. We could argue that others could be good. You know, there's other ones we could rotate in, certainly. But I don't think the squat, the pull-up, and the dip would be bad choices at all. You think about the amount of muscle involved in those three lifts. So yeah, I just knocked out a quick 12 today. Uh, yeah, I know you guys have actually seen me do more than that. Uh, but that's been over a year when I did that 22 on camera. Uh, so 12 right now after benching is a good basic starting point. And we'll see if I can bring that up a little bit. And eventually I might need to start adding weight to it if the reps get too high. But uh, here we go. We're starting it now. So I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.